Lesson six, variable data. Variable data printing is just what it sounds like. It's the printing of variable content to meet specific design, manufacturing, and marketing needs. We call it variable data printing, but the printing aspect of variable data doesn't necessarily mean physical printing. The variable content can be printed to an electronic file so that the finished design can be physically printed or it could be output for digital needs. When using variable data, designers have the ability to personalize their creations for individual needs. Instead of designing one static layout, designers are able to create multiple options. This allows the design to become dynamic. For example, a large company can automate the process of making business cards. Employees can make personalized selections from a list like the typeface or the color, any imagery, text, etc. And then the design can be automated to update the layout to meet the company's needs. Using variable data printing provides many benefits. On the last slide, we talked about customization of business cards, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. Variable data printing can be used to customize designs and layouts, apply mailing addresses, perform targeted marketing, personalize gifts, and more. Let's talk about a specific example. Think about a local veterinarian. As a business, they can choose to send out generic postcards to everyone who lives within a certain geographic location, hoping to get to the residents that have pets. Or they can choose to perform targeted marketing using variable data printing. Instead of sending out a generic postcard, they will use targeted marketing to only send postcards to residents with pets and each postcard will be personalized to, to attract the attention of the resident. Residents with cats will have a picture of a cat on the postcard. Residents with dogs will have dogs. They could even take it a step further by matching the images of the cats and the dogs to the specific color and breed of the resident's pet. Variable data printing allows for complete customization of individual postcards. Residents with pets that are overdue for routine checkups can have a message about an annual health care option. Residents with multiple pets can have a message about a multi-pet discount. There really is no limit to the amount of customization that is possible. Now that you know what variable data is, you'll be able to see it applied in the real world. It is all around you. You just have to look for it. Sometimes variable data is subtle like when changing mailing addresses on an envelope through an automated process, but other times it's in your face. Anytime you receive something in the mail that has your name included as part of the design, it has been created using variable data printing. You can even customize advertisements to end users. Some users will receive a 20% discount, but maybe new customers receive a 25% off coupon. Variable data can also be used to let the end user customize their purchase. A website can be set up for a parent to make choices for their child's superhero poster. After they make their selections, a database is created to port those choices from the website into a design automatically. So the company producing the poster just has to hit print. No one has to manually create the custom artwork. It is all done using variable data printing. Utilizing variable data printing techniques for marketing saves time and money. In the past, if a marketing department wanted to make sure their promotional information got to a specific audience, they would have to either make an educated guess or distribute more of what they were passing out in hopes that what they needed to communicate to their audience would ultimately get to the right people. If we go back to our veterinarian example, in the past, the vet's office would need to distribute promotional postcards to every single person within a certain geographic location, whether they owned a pet or not. This is costly because they would need to produce more postcards than they actually needed because they were sending postcards to people without pets. With variable data printing, the local vet is not only able to send postcards to, to specific addresses that have pets, they can also personalize each postcard to have a message specifically targeting that pet's owner. Variable data comes in all shapes and sizes. It can be as simple as inkjetting addresses on mailing content 
or as complex as a custom Photoshop rendered alphabet soup on a postcard. What's important about variable data is that it is an automated process. A design is set up in such a way that components or elements within the design can be changed based on data input from a spreadsheet. Variable data can be set up in InDesign in just a few short steps. We'll use the data merge panel and a spreadsheet saved as a CSV file, which is a comma separated value file. It is really important to think about the functionality of your design before jumping into InDesign. So really think about what part of the design will be static and what will be variable. I also highly recommend designing one complete version of your design before doing any data merges. Make sure the design is functional first before automating anything. Last, it is a good idea to use the longest word or phrase when testing your layout. For example, if you're making business cards, choose the person with the longest last name so that you know for sure your layout works for every name in the database. Step one. Design your template. Identify what will automate with variable content. In my example, the name, the first name and the last name, the email address, the person's title, and their phone number will all automate. Step two, create a spreadsheet that identifies the variable content. The first row in your spreadsheet represents the header row. This should be a descriptive word like first name or phone number Whatever you put in the first row will be used in the variable data process, but it will not appear in any finished design. It will be the word that appears as a placeholder in your design before your automation is activated. Step three, fill in the columns of the spreadsheet with your variable content. Add as many new rows as you need for your designs. For example, if you're making business cards, each new row, rows two till up to 10,000 or more will represent a new employee. Step four, make sure all columns are filled in. Don't skip any columns or rows. Do not leave any cells blank. Then save the spreadsheet as a .csv or a comma separated value file. I also recommend saving a copy as an Excel spreadsheet as a backup. You must use a CSV file to automate variable data in InDesign. Notice how I chose the second CSV option when exporting from Excel. Step five, go back to InDesign. Launch the data merge panel. You can open it via the window menu. Choose window, utilities, and then data merge. You will need to load your CSV file as the data source for your variable data. You can do this by selecting data source via the options file menu on the data merge panel. The columns from your CSV file should now appear as variable field options within the data merge panel. Step six, highlight each variable field in your design. One at a time, sync each field to the variable fields on the data merge panel. If you are making business cards, your variable content may include the first name separate from the last name, the phone number, possibly an address, an office location, etc. In order to automate this process, you will need to highlight each section one at a time and then click the data merge field on the data merge panel to link them. You can see in this example that I've automated five variable fields, the first name, last name, position title, phone number, and email address. I use the terms first name and last name to designate where the person's first and last name will appear. However, by doing that, the length of those words, first name and last name, end up being longer than the line that I've allocated for the actual employee's first and last name. If that really bugs you, you can go back to your Excel spreadsheet. You can rename those columns first and last instead of first name and last name, and then you can start over again. You can reset your data source, you can relink the data source to the fields in your design, and then it will display as just one continuous line in your design. Step seven, finally activate your variable data. There are a few options for this. The easiest option is to create a merged document. 
Choose Create Merge Document via the Options Flyout menu on the Data Merge panel. This will automate your variable data and will open a completely new InDesign document. There will be one page for each row of your CSV file. You can then scroll through the designs, check them, and then, when you're confident that they are all correct, you can print or export the results. You can see here that these are the results of my business cards using an automated data merge to populate the names of the employees on their business cards. Let's walk through this example together. Below this video in Canvas, there is an option to download the variable data example packaged InDesign project. In it, you will see an InDesign file and an IDML file and an Excel spreadsheet. You will need to open either the IDML or the INDD file to get started. This is a business card that I have created as a template. I want to use variable data to create business cards for everyone in a company. In order to set that up, I need to have an Excel spreadsheet that lists all of the employees for the company. The first row is a header row and it's the title of what you're creating. So in my variable data, I am going to have a field to replace the first name, the last name, the position title, the phone number, and the email address. It's also very important not to have any gaps in your spreadsheet. There should be no empty rows and no empty columns. Everything should be continuous. So I'm using rows 2 through 20 and columns A through E without any gaps. Once my spreadsheet is finalized, that's why I have it saved as an Excel file so I can keep editing it. Once it has been finalized, I need to save a copy. So I'm going to choose File, Save As. And I'm just going to let it go into the package folder, but I need to save a copy as a comma separated value file. There are two. There's CSV UTF and comma separated values. I recommend choosing the second option. Sometimes the UTF file doesn't work. Once you're confident that your spreadsheet is done, you can close out. And now I have an Excel spreadsheet and I have a CSV spreadsheet. In InDesign, I can now automate my design. But one tip that I have for you is when you're creating your static design and using placeholder names and positions and phone numbers, you should always use the longest name possible. So if I open up my Excel spreadsheet again, I can take a look at the first name, the last name, the position title, and more. In it, I can see that the longest first name appears to be Anthony, and the longest last name is Hernandez. And I know that there's nobody in the company with that name, but I'm gonna enter it. Uh, I'm going to enter it as a placeholder because if the longest possible name works with my design, that means every other name within the spreadsheet will work. And that goes for all fields. So the longest position title is research and development. So I'm going to say that Anthony Hernandez is in research. Whoops, don't erase all of it. D-E-V-E-L-O-P-M-E-N-T. The phone number should all be the same length and I don't think that there's any issue with the phone number, um, with the email address, but we can type that longest hypothetical name, just to be sure. Now we know that no matter what we populate into our variable data fields, none of them will be longer than the lines that we've allocated for them. Your InDesign file is your working file, so I'm gonna save it so that I always have it to come back to. I am going to create a data merge document, which will be a separate document from this one. So I'm gonna keep this one if I ever need to edit or run the data merge again. And the new file is the one that I'm gonna say are my finished designs. To automate variable data in InDesign, you need to use the data merge panel. You can open it via the min window menu. Choose window, utilities, and then data merge. The data merge panel has instructions on how to activate a data merge. 
The first step is to hit the Options Flyout menu and to set your data source. We are going to set our data source by finding the CSV file that we just made. See how I cannot select the Excel spreadsheet? It must be a comma separated value file. As soon as I open the data source, my data merge panel will change to show me what the columns were in that spreadsheet. These are my variable fields. I now need to sync my template to the variable fields. And to do that, I'm going to highlight my text. You may want to turn on your hidden characters to make sure that you're not getting any extra spaces or things like that when you're activating. Because in the scenario where I want the first name and the last name to import separately, I want to keep the space between them. So when I activate Anthony and select first name, I want to make sure that hidden character with that space is still there. And the same goes for the last name. Hernandez will be last name. Notice when I activate first name and last name, it is longer than the line that I've allocated. As long as I still see the paragraph return symbol at the end of the line, it's not the end of the world. It will automate fine. If it really bugs you though, you can go back to your spreadsheet. You can rename it just first and last, which are much shorter. And then you can start this process all over again. Okay, research and development is the position title. If this happens, if you highlight too much, a little tip for that is select everything except for the last letter and sync it, but then come back and erase that little T that's there. For the phone number, we'll do the same thing. So I'll highlight everything except for the last number. I'll link it to phone number and then I can delete the number. And for the email address, I'll do everything except for uh, the M in com. And then don't forget to erase that M that's left over. So now I have automated my five fields. My first name, last name, position title, phone number, and email address. As long as I double check that the, those are the placements that I wanted to include those variable fields, and it's correct, I can create a merge document. When you hit the option flyout menu on the data merge panel, there's an option to create merge document. When you do this, there are lots of options to explore, and I encourage you to explore them. For now, I'm going to record all records, the records being all of the options from rows two through 20 in my spreadsheet, and I'm going to select OK. When you do this, you will get a second document. So my first document is open. My second document that has the hyphen one is the second file. You should also expect to receive a prompt that tells you whether or not there is or is not overset text. So we, we prevented overset text by using the longest possible name to make sure all our fields fit. So we shouldn't expect to see any overset text. But if you get a prompt that says overset text, you need to look through the results. A merge document, we look at our pages panel, will add one new page to your document for every record in your spreadsheet. So now I had records two through 20. So that's 19 people. So I have a document that has 19 pages. And if we click through the pages, you can see that Marie Callister and Andrew Jones and Sam Perkins and Andrea Perez and Michael Hansen and Garrett Smith and everyone else that works at this company now has a custom business card with their name, their title, their phone number, and their email address. At this point, I can decide what I want to do with this file. I could print it, I could export it, I could do a number of different things, but now I have, most importantly, I have all of the copies, all of the different variable business cards that I was wanting for my name.